Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I want to go over something that I, that I think you guys might find kind of useful potentially. It really depends on your situation and you know how you have your code set up in your org. But regardless, I want to show this to you guys. It's going to be really quick. So let's jump right into it. What I want to go over is this recalculate formulas method that exists on the S object uh, class. Actually, I think it's on the formulas class, but it also appears here. And, you know, just if we, if we read the description, it says recalculates all formula fields on an S object and sets updated field values. Rather than inserting or updating object each time, each time you want to test changes to your formula logic, call this method and inspect your new field values. Then make further logic changes as needed. So, yeah, it basically sounds just as is. Uh, it essentially allows you to make use of that formula field. And I think there's some pretty interesting applications or scenarios in which this might be useful depending again depending on how you know your, your specific circumstance and your and how your 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 code might be set up i think we can quickly kind of go over some examples if this isn't really making sense but i do quickly want to point out right here that there is this kind of gotcha right here that this method doesn't recalculate cross object formulas so basically you know if, if you have like parent child relationships things like that it only will calculate the formula fields on your actual object essentially so just kind of keep that in mind. I have these other things open, but I'll kind of go over it and I'll link this documentation down in the description box below. So feel free to use that. And again, as always, if you guys have any questions ever about this stuff that we're going over or any questions about any things you guys are running in into in your guys' jobs or whatever, feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below and I'll try to get you back to you guys as soon as possible. But yes, so for today's scenario, back in my trailhead org, I want to work with the supply object and you'll see here that I have this field called total cost and it's a formula field. Uh, essentially what it does, it takes the unit and the unit cost and just multiplies those two numbers to get you, you know, another number. So yeah, we'll work with this total cost formula field. So let's jump into our VS code real quick. And as you see here, I already have some kind of code already written out. But essentially scenario that I'm kind of thinking of here is uh, let's pretend uh, right here. So regarding this, these lines of code right here, let's pretend that we are receiving a list of supplies, you know, whether it be in a before trigger or you know, whatever the case might be. But we have this list of supplies, right? Uh, in this case, one of them is called toilet paper and the other one is called water bottle. And as you can see here, we have for both of them quantity and unit cost defined, as well as the type of currency we're using, that doesn't really matter. And if we were to try to do something like this right here, and keep in mind these, in this specific scenario, these records are not yet entered into the system. And if you know where I'm going with this, essentially because these records are not yet entered into the system, that formula field hasn't yet really computed itself. So it's essentially gonna be null, right? So for example, I'm gonna run this execute anonymous real quick, just so you guys can kind of see this here. If I scroll down, we get to our debugs and you'll see here that the total cost for both is currently null. Uh, we have all the data we need. We have the unit cost populated and the quantity populated, but that formula field continues to be null because in this specific case, the records have not yet been inserted. So what we can do is some interesting stuff, right? So what I'll do is above right here, what we can do is we can make use of that recalculate formula uh, method and we will start simply by just calling the formula class and then using that method and you'll see here that it, ex it expects some s objects uh, essentially a list so what you can do is you can just pass in that supply list right there and simply by just doing this thing right here this should now this total supply total cost should now be populated so for example if we hit save and we just do execute anonymous i go down right here and you'll now see in my debugs that the total cost has been computed. For the first one, it's $19.99, and the other one's a thousand bucks. And you can see here that it's just again the quantity times unit cost is equal to total total cost. So it's kind of useful, right? In, in this specific case. And just to kind of add a bit more context, the way it, it can be useful is kind of like how I pointed out here in the, my to-do. You know, perhaps there is some additional logic that you need to do in a specific circumstance that's based off of that formula field. Uh, in this case, I just wrote like, for example, you know, do some additional stuff if the total cost of the supply is a hundred bucks. So you can have some additional logic that, I don't know, perhaps if this is greater than a hundred, then you need to like create 
something else or like a tasker, send it off to some external API. And again, I say that this is like very contextual to your specific circumstance because like you might think, well, perhaps it's better to, you know, um, before or, or rather, let's say if, if, if this is being done in the before trigger, then why not just let the before trigger fire and then have like your other code that might be responsible for additional logic, like in an after trigger or some case. But again, what I'm trying to point out is it's very contextual to your specific circumstance. Like there might be a case in which this, in, in which you have to do this logic in a before trigger before this, these records are inserted or in some other scenario, right? Like it, again, I'm, I'm kind of just providing a high level overview of what is now currently possible with this. Cause I believe this recalculate formula thing became available recently. I think in like in the 2020 winter or summer release. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But I, I think it it's an interesting function, method, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And it has potential use case, I think. But anyways, so just to kind of expand a little bit more on this, what you probably should do, because this will return a a list of formula recalc result type. So for example, just to kind of expand upon that, like I said, this will return a list of formula recalc calc result like so and we'll just call this results and what is contained in here is going to be uh, let's just jump into the documentation real quick uh right here and it's going to return these things right here or rather these are the methods of, of things that it returns for each record that or as object that you pass into that recalculate formula formula uh, yes as you see here it's going to return an instance of formula recalc result which you can then do various things on for example if you do the dot get errors on it if, if, if potentially it was like an error and your formula field couldn't compute for some reason you can do the dot get errors and then you can store that in a formula recalc field error instance and then you can do some some additional work to figure out why it didn't pass uh but for the purposes of this demo i, I really just want to kind of hone in on th on this right here the is success so for example what we could do here instead of just like automatically assuming that this is going to work uh, because it, that could kind of be dangerous, right? What we want to do is, for example, let's iterate through these results. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say iterate through each formula recalc result, and we'll just call this result, iterate through that list. So it's results. And inside of right here, what we're going to do is really simply, we're going to say if it's, if that current, Iteration was a success, or iteration of this results is is, is it success? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get that supply that we're currently currently know that is a success, and I'll just call it supply. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the result, and then there's this method called get s object. So basically, that just returns the the supply that was successful um, in this iteration. And one thing to note: this is going to return an s object, so you'll have to typecast it to. Uh, your actual inst uh, your actual s object type which is in this case supply or else you'll get an error if you don't do it so once you have that uh what i can do is now kind of like copy this right here there now let's get rid of this format this a little bit just so it doesn't look so bad so yeah so now we're saying you know if if the formula field was essentially able to recalculate successfully then you can go ahead and for now we're just kind of debugging it uh doing a system .debug. But you know you can have your logic here of you know doing something with that information, which again might be useful. So now let's go ahead and hit save, and let's run that code. And we should still get the same thing because nothing's really changed. But now we kind of have like this uh, a little bit more defensive coding, right? Where it's like we're not just going to assume that this is going to work automatically. We're only going to do something with with that information of that of that formula field if it actually successfully recalculated. So that's something to know. Also, and I know this is kind of funny. You can use this method to recalculate a formula field. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say for example down here. So you know, for example, we already recalculated our formula field right for the total cost. But what if uh, let's say I'm going to do something that's not going to look that great. But uh, let's iterate through our supply list one more time. So uh, this is kind of just to prove a point, not that this is like production grade code or anything, but we're going to iterate through our supply list. And all I'm going to do is 
I'm going to increase the, the unit cost. I'm going to just multiply it by 10. So we'll increase it a little bit. So we're going to say supply dot total cost. And we'll just do a times equals. We're going to multiply it by 10. So you can imagine, you know, the, the sorry, the not, not the total cost, the unit cost. My, my bad. So you can imagine that we're going to iterate through these two records or objects right here. And we're going to make the unit cost just 10 times whatever it currently is, right? And at the end, uh, or, or right after this right here, I'm going to do just another system debug right here. And yeah, let me, let me fix this real quick. So again, just to recap, I'm creating another for loop. Again, this is kind of like a contrived example. Uh, but essentially, we're just multiplying the unit cost by 10. And you, I guess, could expect that the total cost formula field would update to reflect, you know, the new the new unit cost. But if we save this and we run it, you might be surprised to see that we're still getting the old total cost, even though the, you know, un the, the unit cost has increased times 10. And that's actually where this recalculate formula field would come in handy, right? So uh, again, this time I'm going to be kind of lazy. I'm not going to check for the... Uh, actually, let's just kind of... Yeah, we'll, we'll, co we'll copy it again. No big deal. I'll paste this right there. So uh, now what I did is after we multiplied our unit cost times 10, we're going to rerun that recalculate formula field again. And you'll see here that I'm, I'm kind of just reusing this, this list, which is why it's not... I'm, I'm not I didn't copy this portion right here. We're just reusing it. And we're, kind of, we're basically just going to redo the same thing. So now let's hit execute anonymous apex. And if we look at our debugs, uh, you'll see here that initially the, you know, the, the first time we calculated, that we calculated the formula field, the unit cost was this right here. Then this second iteration we have right here is from this right here where we increased the unit cost times 10. And then we printed out the total cost, which was still the same as the one before it, but then when we recalculate the formula field yet again, now the total cost has increased times 10 uh, for both of them. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I had today. Again, just something that's a bit more high level. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Like I said, there might be instances in which you guys might find this useful in your own orgs. Now, very quickly before we go, I always like to emphasize what I have in my bio right here, that I'm just a random dude on the internet. You know, nothing I share or post is for production environments, you know, do your own research, follow best practices in your org and understand what you're doing before you copy and paste code into your org. But yeah, I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.